place. So I've been asked the question, how do I do an inline form? So, um, and that means not just a straight form going down, but actually like blocks by the side of each other. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to do it on this home page here and I'm going to go and select the home page. So let me just go to site and into pages. And remember this same technique can be used for any other place that you can use the block editor into. So we're going to go into the logged in page, which is one here. Put it on any page you like. And we're going to basically add a form block and then do some formatting. Okay, let's go and create a new block. Um, just going to create an empty block here. Uh, now, depending on how big you want this form, you might want it to run right the way across, in which case you can go into the editor and you can enable full width in here. I'm going to now add a row. This. Add a row. Add a form element in here. So this is a form element here. And the thing to remember is anything inside this purple color is the form itself, okay? So if you were to drop form fields outside of this area, then they will not get submitted. Okay, this is important. Now the default form has given you the email um, and the first name here. We can change all these anyway, but I'm gonna click on this red box here and I'm gonna go and drop in a two row. So now I'm gonna go to elements two row. And now I've got two rows in here. I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna drop it in here. And I'm gonna take this one and I'll drop it in here. Okay, so now I've created an inline form. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna duplicate it. There we go. So all I'm doing is duplicating. You're gonna see what I'm gonna do in a second. I'm gonna take this form, I'm gonna format this for first name, last name. So I'm gonna go into here and under first name, it's already in there. So I'm gonna put in here, first name. Okay, and I'm gonna make it required. And I'm gonna come into this one now. I'm going to go across, uh, yep, you get it. I'm going to put surname, but input type, last name, okay? Required, yes. Okay, let's come down to this one now. Come into here, I'm going to put email. So I'm going to put email. And notice it's filling out there. So you can put whatever you like. Set email, great. Let's say take some additional information. Let's take some phone number. So I'm going to come into this one this time. And we're going to put phone number. I'm going to come into the input type and we've got phone number in here. So there we go. Now you're going to notice that we have quite a few here. So we have email, first name, last name, address, city, zip code or postcode, phone, and we have custom type. Okay, let's do a custom type. Let's go in here and let's ask them to put in their date of birth. So let's go down to custom type. We're going to need to set an ID name up for this. So I'm going to call, put it birthday. Inside the form here, put birthday. You can make it required if you want. And that's done. So remember to put the input type as custom and then custom type name birthday, okay? Or whatever you wanna call it. I'm also gonna make sure this is a required field. Email should always be required. Okay, let's take another one here. Go in here, go across, custom type. Let's put birth town. Like so. What town did you grow up in? Question mark. There we go. So we can also go and drop some other types. I'm going to take this row and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm actually going to take this element and I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to go delete, click delete. And then in here this time, I'm still going to go to the form tab, but this time maybe I want a checkbox. Let's click checkbox. 
let's go into here change these settings so are you over 18 question mark over 18 question mark so I can now if I wanted to duplicate this come into this one I just like to put, um, might put some more stuff. So I'm going to put that in there. Build name, mail, question mark. Okay. So let's go and drop another little box in here. I'll just put some text in. Check for yes. I'll take that and I'll move it up. Again, you can come in here and style it up as however you like. Okay. Right. So I'm going to delete that one out. And that's how you can do it. So you can create an online form like this, an inline form. So lastly, we're coming to here. And I can just style this button. I don't want this quite as big. I'm going to come down here to full width, make it normal. And I'll align it left. There we go. Might take a little bit of that padding away, top and bottom. Um, maybe add a little bit more this side. Like that. I'm going to make sure that it is a submit form. If you want to add it to an email list, you can. If you want to add it to a funnel. And if you want to add tags, you can as well. You can also do a post submit action so you can take them to another page, thank you page or any of those sort of things. But this is now done. Now remember the important aspect of this is to make sure that it's all inside this. Okay, so let's save it and check it out. So here's our form. I'm going to just put in some details in here. This, I'll just make up a dummy number here okay let's check these and submit and you can see you've got a success now you could redirect them to the other page as I was telling you you can actually redirect them to another page by going through some of these settings here so you can add them to an email list, add them to a funnel, you can tag them, so they've got tags, you can use a post submit action, so you can send them to a thank you page there, so remember that. We're also going to check in the system itself, because it should have registered me as a user, so if I go to all, and I refresh here, then I'm going to see I'm in there, there we are, and what I can do is, I can just have a look at this, I can edit this, and what you're going to see is a lot of information in here, so all that information has come in through here and into the custom fields that you've set up. So that is how to create an inline form using Zedler.